From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. WarChant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up WarChant, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. Coffee's for closers only. Now here's WarChant.com's Aslan Hajavandi and Corey Clark. That is correct. It's a live edition of Wake Up War Chant, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. I'm Aslan. He is Corey. Thanks for being here, everybody. And again, don't forget, go to DeLunaCoffee.com, explore their world of coffee, use the promo code WARCHANT15, uh, because DeLuna Coffee is just so good, man. Corey, how are you? Would you say it's the best coffee you've ever tasted? Absolutely. Yeah, without a doubt, right? Yeah, nice, nice. Right. Stephanie really likes it. That's all I'm going to say. She really likes it. And she is a coffee connoisseur. She is. She's got like a very sophisticated palate. Um, she does, much like our own Gene Williams. Yeah, oh, yeah. Gene Williams likes it a lot. Gene Williams loves his coffee. Any time of day, it seems. Um, and he's a big fan of DeLuna, too. So if you're not buying DeLuna and you drink coffee. What are you doing? You're just what? you're just dumb. Makes well, I mean. No, I mean, right. that's the only way to say it, right? You're just oh. dumb. You don't know what you're doing. You know, I, I find this weird sort of like line I have to straddle between trying to have common sense and mm. you know and, and trying to be nice. And I see people be mean to other people. I'm like, why you got to be mean to that person? But then I'm like, I am mean. So yeah, no, that's it's, true. It's weird. It's it's difficult. Let's see if I get some dichotomy, over. dichotomy with you. It is. It's hard. I don't know what I want to do. Going on? You, got a, you got a bug in your house or something? Or? No, I'm I'm trying to get the fan on. A little, it's a little, little tepid, a little tepid in the oh, midtown offices okay. today. Beautiful day, sunny day in Tallahassee. Cannot complain. Um, and also check this. This this brightened my day a little bit up as well. I'm uh, fueled by the sun, I'm fueled by Deluna Coffee, but also uh, you know people that seem to kind of come around to uh, what we're trying to do here on the program. Shout out to the big homie R. It's all he's known as. Uh, says, how do I get that forcing the football song as a ringtone? So hmm. they're coming around slowly but I mean, surely. Gene said he liked it too. Uh, so that was uh, maybe I'm in the wrong. I'm in the minority. I, I didn't know that it was going to go over so well. So that's that's, all right. that's great. As long as keep it going. Sorry. Right. Well, we we're going to be taking all these phone calls, so we won't have to be forcing the football at all. That's pretty cool. True. And also, we can kind of uh, thank Florida State for uh, hammering out the 2024 schedule. So who we got? We got Charleston Southern and Memphis trying to get some. Mm -hmm. Yep, they want a little piece along with Florida and the Notre Dame's kind of a half non-conference game. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know uh, if, uh, you know, the 49ers didn't have a weekend available for Florida State to play. They usually try to play the best teams they can. So I'm not quite sure. Maybe the Bucks. The Bucks probably didn't want to play a, 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 a Division One team in the middle of the season. But, yeah, I love that uh, in the middle of LSU, Alabama, and Georgia, we did sprinkle in a little Memphis. Which yeah. Memphis is by no means, uh, you know, a sisters of the poor. You know what I mean? Like they can play. They, they had coaches from there. So uh, it might not be the easiest game, but you hope by 2024, Florida State will be a better team and a better program than Memphis uh, is. Hopefully. Hopefully. Well, hey, without further ado, then, we do have the Renegade Express thread up right now on the warchant.com travel council. So go ahead and uh, post your comments. We'll be doing probably a two-part mailbag. So you're actually getting five shows this week, everybody, because we dropped mm. uh, the Devin Travis interview with Corey and Ira in the podcast feed. So I saw somebody was super excited for that. So well done, Corey. I don't know who's mm. next for you guys, but uh, these things are quite a quite a success. Uh, let's get to, about to, about to get to the phone calls, but then people start showing up and throwing doll hairs at us. Look at this. Let's go, man. Eric Angel. Uh, Earth Angel, Earth Angel, will mm. you be mine? Aslan and Corey, what's up, Noel brothers? Living, living, Eric. Thank you, man. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you very much, man. Thank you very much, for real. Uh, Corey, your Braves beat up on my Cubbies on Sunday night. I'm still mad about it. LOL. Mm. He's kidding. It's it's all gravy, buddy. I still like you. That's you too, Eric. You too, buddy. Go to get it. What's new? What's the new scoop with Knowles football? We got schedule, and that's that's about it, right? This is this Yeah, we got the non-conference games, three. And it's always funny when you when you see an email for the people, why why would you know this? But we're on a media list. So anytime Florida State announces something, you see an email from Derek Satterfield. Uh he's the SID for football. And the way it shows up on my phone is Florida State football, and then I can't read the rest. It just shows the the title of the email, but it only shows like the first three words. So I'm like, what? What did they do? Did they announce a new transfer? Did they 
um, signed Norvell to a 10 year extension. So I race to the email, I click on it and it's uh, you know, a, a non-conference game from three years from now, but still you get big news and not so big news that way, but Hey, in three years, it'll feel like big news. Hmm. Shout out by the way to Eric Angel. He's, he's photographed on the left. That's from the uh, post game show after the spring game That's seven toms in the middle and your guy uh, flashing the thumbs mm. up. You know, actually, Corey, uh, in, in the ancestral homeland of my people uh, in Iran, the thumbs up is actually the same as the middle finger. Like, thumbs up is a bad thing. But I'm not mm. using it in that in that context. This is, hey, what's up, fam? War chant oh. in the house. So, so if I'm ever in, uh, in, if I'm ever over there, right? I'm, I'm. Uh, this is fine though, right? I can still. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Okay, good. Was, the Corey Clark deuces. Those are universal, man. <laughs> Part of the Geneva <laughs> right. Convention. Sure. They're all. They're yeah. all. Good. They're all good. Uh, Eric, for real, man. Thank you so much. Uh, he's he's starting to become a pillar. He's he's, oh, he's definitely in the pillar range for sure, man. Uh, and he's yeah, man. It's it's very very nice, Eric. You don't have to do that. That's very nice that you do. And yeah, I was happy about the Braves game. Was not happy about Acuna, but it looks like as long we avoided something serious, he's only going to be out for a couple games, maybe. Told so you. that was a I lot. Told you. Stop a lot. I was man. It's the Braves, right? We get this all time guy, and then he's going to have an oblique strain for a year. So it looks like it's okay. Everybody, rest easy. Rest easy. Uh, shout out Thomas Giddings. Man, we're already up to a hundo. We haven't even really said anything of substance. Appreciate you, Thomas. He says, Aslan, send me the shirt size of you and Corey and the address of the downtown office uh, to uh, his handle on War Channel. I have something for you guys. What every We just got more gifts and presents from Ralph, too, Corey. Everybody oh, he's coming correct. I mean, Thomas, you don't have Thomas. You, you hold down like three jobs. You got two children. Don't don't gift us anything. No, I don't listen to him, Thomas. I'll take a shirt. I, as you can see, I need all the shirts I can need, man. I have a rotation of about four. Okay. So um, and this isn't even one of them. This is an undershirt. I was a little rushed, so I didn't even put on a, a, a normal collared black dumb looking shirt. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'll take them, man. I'll take both of them if Aslan doesn't want any. Aslan, you send him that address. I wish you would have just put electrical tape over the swoosh. And we've been in full mm. Vinny Chase mode, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. T-shirt, man. So that's going to be my, my Christmas gift to you this year. Uh, he does say his wife loves DeLuna coffee. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. When we, get, when we get that unconquered, when the unconquered coffee hits the shelves, Thomas, maybe that'll be my gift offering to you for the T-shirts. But uh, in any event, the support is much appreciated. Thank you very much uh, to you and Eric. And uh, let's get on with it then. Let's take phone calls. It is a call-in show after all. Let's go to Virginia Beach, Virginia. Let's make sure everything is fine. In the Tidewater, Gator Kirk in the house. Gator Kirk, good evening to you. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you guys doing tonight? S strong to very strong over here. Corey? Yep, I'm killing it, crushing it, feeling good. Feeling good, my man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, my dog apologizes for the disruptions last week. She was uh, really excited about baseball game coming on. Too bad we can't hit a <laughs> damn ball to save our life. Well, it doesn't uh, happen, yeah. Yep. So, but anyway, I'm glad y'all are doing well. Um, it's 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 nice weather here, which is awesome. Not probably not as nice as Florida, but seventy some degrees is always awesome. Mm, nice, absolutely. Here, here's here's my question. Um, who are your top six players from the spring? Who? Oh. Why six? Core? We don't we don't do these arbitrary numbers. We will not be put into a corner. Super six. The super six. Um. Okay, I'm gonna go. Uh. It's the Seminole Six. It's the Seminole Six. Yeah. Oh, now sure, that's why sure. I picked six. Yep. Come on. All right. Let's go. Okay. He didn't. Ooh. He could have picked sixteen oh. or seventeen. Um, if he's going with the alliteration, I'll, I'll say Jermaine Johnson. Correct. He's one. Um. Oh, after that, <laughs> not a good <laughs> sign. <laughs> that's not. not no, I'm just. I, it's. It just seems like there's so many uh, grouped together. I tell you what, man. It's. 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 It's hard because I was only out there four or five times. I wasn't out there like Ira. The Sydney Williams kid really impressed me uh, multiple, multiple times. Um, I think Jordan Travis, you'd probably put in there. Um, who else yeah. are we looking at? Yeah. Who else are we looking Jarian, at? Jarian. Probably throw Jarian in there. Yeah, man. Jarian had, I think Jarian had a really nice spring. Um, Malik I, think, I almost want to be. Yeah, I just I, that that was the one game. I don't know that he was crushing it every day, but he he showed up when it mattered. True freshman, um, though. You know. Yeah, um, I would say it's not my evaluation because it's hard to it's hard to watch the interior of the line 
and know if they're playing well or doing well for the most part. But I would say Fabian Lovett, the way everybody talks, uh, all the coaches talked, had a very good spring. And I think that's five. Um, I'll throw Toa Feely in there because that's my dog. I thought they were going to go when you said interior of the line. I thought we were going to give like a de facto token shout out to the offensive line and give Maurice Smith some love. But I like yeah, so, I love it. I'm going with Fabian Lovett. Love it. All right. We'll do that. Six guys, I think, right there. So yeah. um, Jermaine Johnson, Jordan Travis, Fabian Lovett, Jarian Jones, Malik McLean. Who's the sixth one? And Sidney Williams, but I'm taking Sidney Williams back. For I'm gonna, Philly? No, uh, for Travis J. Okay, you and Travis J. Man, I tell uh, you, Travis J. All those, all those mission takeaways that Adam Fuller tweets out. Travis J. Was in the middle of like four or five of them, especially early. And he's a guy that always kind of catches my eye when I watch. So, what is Jermaine Johnson going to have to do this year for you to be happy? Uh, Gator Kirk, after hearing us just gas him up every time we're asked about standouts from the spring. He, he, I mean, he needs to just create havoc. I mean, uh, if he can, if he can get some pressure on the quarterback and whether he touches them or not, then our linebackers and our secondary will have a better chance. But when you give someone all day back there to throw, I mean, my goodness. <laughs> so, and I think if, um, here Thomas can get healthy. I, I think that, you know, getting getting some pressure mm. on the quarterback and they got to get rid of the ball in less than two or three seconds is going to make a heck of a difference back there. So mm. somebody asked this on. I think, uh, he, uh, he, I think he, he he has something to prove to the SEC that, you know, you guys didn't use me the way I should have been utilized. So I think he's going to be a big dog coming there hunting. There you go, oh. hunt dog. Not a, he ain't a show dog. He's a hunting dog. Um, I will say somebody asked this on headlines about Jermaine Johnson and can one person really have that big of an impact on a defense to take it from awful to decent? And no, that can't happen. But he can take it uh, from awful to better because, yeah, man, you, you know, when you have an elite pass rusher, which we think this guy is, he certainly looked at it in the spring and he looked at it, looked at it at Georgia last year. Um, that changes the complexion of a defense. It's easier on the secondary, like Gator Kirk. It's easier on the other defensive linemen. If they're spending so much time with um, uh, having to worry about him, the other guys are getting single uh, single blocked. A lot of them, at least the other defensive end certainly is. So if he can beat some one-on-ones occasionally, it helps everybody involved to have a dynamic pass rusher. You'd like to have two, three, four of them, like the old days. And I think they, unlike last year, I think they do have a dynamic pass rusher in this guy. I do agree with that. I do. Gary Kirk, anything else for us on the way out? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Make sure everyone out there, you support the Luna Coffee. Join WarChan if you're not a member. That's right. Hit your thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Support all the other similar sports, too. We should, women's soccer should be going. One seat. Volleyball. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Coming down to the end, y'all have a great, great night. I appreciate y'all taking my call. As always, go Knowles. Thank you very much. Shout out to Thank your you dog, Kirk. Parking very briefly. We appreciate yeah, that. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I put I put myself on mute this time just to make sure. <laughs> there you go. There you go. He's an old pro. That's Gator Kirk in Virginia Beach, Virginia. To his up uh, to his point, the Florida State soccer program, the women's team, is actually the number one overall seed in this year's tournament. So. And okay. has not played a, a, a real match in five months. This is the goofiest season in the history of soccer. I hate it for Kikorian. I don't hate it. Maybe they'll still win the national championship. But they, they also lost their best player off uh, last year uh, last year's team, this year's team that played in December. Because for you guys that don't know, most of the big – the ACC played in December, played in the fall, which is when soccer is played. It's a fall sport. So the ACC and I think the SEC played in the fall, went ahead and played. The Pac-12, maybe it was just the Pac-12. The Pac-12, maybe the Big Ten, they did not. So the NCAA decided, okay, we're going to have our national championship in the spring, even though the best team in the country, Florida State, will, doesn't have any games to play because the ACC's already played their conference schedule. They already played the tournament. Florida State won it. That's why they're in the tournament. They're in the tournament as a one seed. And I play the winner of Elon Milwaukee, which is a new format for the Get women's some. tournament. But yes. yeah, I don't like I don't like either one of their chances, Elon or Milwaukee. I'll be honest. I think Florida State, even without even with five months off, should do pretty well. But yeah, man, it's a it's just a bummer that um, they lost their best player off last year's team. She went pro, which I mean, her 
her career was supposed to be up and she didn't even know what the NCAA tournament would look like in May. So it made perfect sense or April, but it's just, you know, I asked her, Corey, and we talked about this, like, man, you should just declare yourself the 2020 national champion because there isn't going to be one because there wasn't a 2020 season. So, um, I mean, there was, but Florida state was the only one that played it. So if, if say UCLA wins in three weeks, wins the whole tournament, are they the 2020 national champion or the 2021 national champion? Mm. I assume they're 2021, right? They didn't play yeah. a single game in 2020. That's so nobody's well. going to claim that 2020. Florida State, which went undefeated and beat the tar out of everyone, and the ACC is loaded with good teams, they should just go ahead. Krikorian already said he wouldn't do it, but they should hang a banner that they're the 2020 national champs. Otherwise, nobody claims it. Florida State well. might as well. They were undefeated, untied. Well, I mean, the basketball team didn't claim the national championship, even though Dickie V and you gave them the uh, the, the banner. They just hung the ACC banner that they won. I mean, yeah, yeah there's going to be. But all the teams didn't play. Florida State actually played in the fall, and the SEC played in the fall. So out of all the teams that were competing in the fall, Florida State was the best team. They should get something for that, other than another ACC banner that they don't care about. That's all I'm saying. Go ahead and claim it. Nobody can take it away from you. All right. Well, we're, we're streaming live here, obviously, on YouTube and Facebook and now Instagram. Just got the Instagram up and running. If you could hit that thumbs up button, we, uh, oh, we all right. appreciate nice. it uh, very much so. Uh, let's go back to the phone lines here, Corey. We've got uh, we got friend of the program. I think voice of the people, rather. I mean, you say friend of the program. I haven't met many of you in, in real life, so I really shouldn't give you that designation. But oh, he left. Look at that. He left. So never oh. mind. He's no longer the voice of the people. Don't but, even say who it was. I don't even want to know. Uh, I mean, I had everything ready. He yeah. tweeted, he DM'd me some video. I had the video ready to go so that I could set, set it all up and tee it up. But no, he he, he ran away. So uh, we'll just keep it we'll keep it on the lines. We'll go to Wes. We got Wes in the villages. Wes is always steady. He ain't hanging up on nobody. Wes, how are you, man? Good, fellas. I'm here. You know me. In a high roll. That's right. Mm -hmm. Steady. That's right. I, uh, that's right. Yeah. I was expecting uh, somebody else. I didn't know I'd be up, so that's cool. I uh, uh, y'all doing all right this evening? Sounds like we're doing good so far. Yeah, man. This is this is this is it's the off season, but you know we still have all of you giving us questions, things to discuss. Makes my job yeah. easy. I can't complain. Corey's on every a roll. week. Just every spoke about women's soccer for five minutes. It's amazing. I did it. I, hey, man, I'm all encompassing. I feel like we're getting closer and closer to normal, just in this country as a whole. Um, with, with, uh, with every, just the last 14 months of craziness. And then, um, it's a beautiful day. What, what's not to like Wes? What's not to like, man. It's things are coming around. Things are picking up. In fact, I saw on Twitter yesterday, or maybe it was today. Somebody tweeted that. Yeah. Well, it must've been yesterday that last year at this time, this exact date, whatever that would have been April 19th of last year, we were all getting excited about the first installment of the Jordan document. Yeah. 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 That's what we were doing a year ago in this time. Now we've had, it's just, it's, you know, this last year, we, we last, if you think back to last year and how just depressing everything was, it's good to feel optimistic again. It's good to be upbeat and be in the sunshine. So it's mm. good stuff, man. Mm. Well said, Corey. I love it. I love the optimism. Yeah. You got to love the positivity. That's mm. right. The, uh, so my question, I know it's a little bit more challenging coming up with stuff right now, but my, what I wanted to ask was which, uh, and for, for pertaining to football, which uh, off the field hire have you guys been most impressed with and also the, uh, the overall impact of the Ryan Bartow hire? Uh, I want to get your thoughts on that. Mm. So I think with the Bartow hire um, – I think with any of that, the jury's still out. Let's see what we look. Let's see what it looks like in December. Let's see what it looks like next December, uh, December of 2022. Um, but it's certainly it's early. You know what I mean? Like you can't get too excited yet. It's early. I remember, um, you know, when Willie joined, and I was just all excited that all the coaches were on Twitter. Like there you go, you're jumping into the 21st century. All the coaches are Twitter. They got Twitter personalities. Um, and that did not mean anything at all. I think this guy uh, could end up being a very, very good addition to the program. Um, I did see Luther Campbell tweet at him, and I know Mike Norvell retweeted it. And I know people have their opinions of Luther Campbell, but that is a very important person um, in South Florida when it comes to recruiting. And if you're on his side, that's good time. That's, that, that means pretty good things for your program. So uh, Ryan Bartow being, uh, being tweeted out by Luther Campbell saying, that's why I like you. That's why you're the man. 
uh, that's not a bad thing for sure. So again, too early to say this is a home run or even a double uh, because just we haven't had a signing day yet with him. But all evidence seems to be pointing to that was a very good hire. But again, I couched that as much as I could. I qualified that as much as I could. I love it. I don't have to say anything after you give such thorough responses like that. I, I can't even really identify what these guys that are in off-field roles really do to even give them kind of credit for anything. What's I mean, his I don't, role, by the way, Aslan? What's, I know what his role is. What is his actual title, Bartos? Do you remember? Is it like director of like high school relations? High school, I mean, high school relations? Like Carlos Lachlan was, uh, you know, like director of high school relations. So I, and when Lachlan left yeah. on-field job, he took over. So so we should – not everybody knows knows him. So, yeah, we sh I should have pointed out that, yes, he's the director of high school relations, which basically is a recruiting job. Yes. And he's, he's seemingly very connected in this state when it comes to recruiting. Yes. Well said. Otherwise, I mean, there's a couple other hires that he made, um, but I, I – I really can't. I mean, I'm sorry. You know, everybody wants answers. I couldn't. I don't know specifically what they are doing for me to actually give them credit for anything that's happened because we've, we've only seen really stuff on the field. I, I'm not the big recruiting guy. We do have a recruiting show 5:30 tomorrow with Michael Langson. Maybe he uh, can give some more insight into some of these uh, analysts and off-field guys because they can do some recruiting at least when the guys are on campus, but the players haven't been on campus because it's been a dead period. So, um, and I can't say Randy Shannon because who knows? He's only been here for like a few weeks, and the spring game was over. But don't you like the idea of Randy Shannon? Like, yeah, no matter yeah. how it works out, it's a good idea. It's a big swing. It's a smart swing. Right. It's a good two strike. Just put the bat on the ball, much like the Florida State baseball team. Okay. Just try to make contact, a smart swing, a smart approach. It's a, uh, it's a really good approach, and it's a good idea. Uh, whether it works out or not, I like, uh, I, I like just the thought process in, in making that higher and seeing if it turns into, into anything. Yeah, but how would you define it working out? Are you, are you thinking more recruiting inroads being made in South Florida? Or are you both, thinking both, both. That's play? Both. I, no, I think he, one. Pick one. No, no, I, I, I think it's both. I think that's why it's a good idea. Um, if it was just recruiting, I don't know if that's worthy of it. And if it's just helping out Fuller, I don't know. that. But the combination um, could make him a very good hire because otherwise – you know, it's a, it's a quality control analyst. Like Alabama wins, but they have 50 of them. I don't know how much difference Randy Shannon will make just in that in one of those roles. But in both, he might have uh, a bit of an impact. He can at least make inroads with those guys in uh, in South Florida. And then also he can tell Adam Fuller occasionally, man, what is that? What are we doing here? What, why don't we – where is Sean Taylor? Where is Ed Reed? Where is our Ed Reed? Like he can make some of those comments too. All right. All right. Well, um yeah, I don't know how much more luster he really has left when it comes to coaching, like actual X's and O's. I don't, not that he's, you know, not thought of well in the profession, but he's, you know, he's no longer. I don't think it hurts though, right? It doesn't no, it hurt. doesn't hurt. But again, yeah. I'm just trying to measure. I, I don't know what John Q. Florida State fan thinks when they when they think that Florida State just has Randy Shan as an analyst, if, as if this is going to be some kind of real big uh, missing piece where he's able to break down film better than anybody else and really give them insight into their opponents and. Things like that. I, I, you have an, you have a comp, you have another competent set of eyes helping your defense yep. out. And you need all the help you can get on the defense. I'm cool with that. The recruiting stuff, maybe he gives you a couple names. Maybe he, he can he can talk to the coach to get you onto the high school and and know who's uh, the, the the player that's up and coming. But he can't actually you know make calls and go out and visit players. But when they're on campus, which yep. hopefully will be happening here soon, he can. So that's that's a smaller piece of it. But just you know. Never, it doesn't hurt to have guys that used to be defensive coordinators, no matter how good their defense, I guess, performed. Uh, maybe it'll be a good devil's advocate. So, yeah, we'll go with that. Anything else for us, Wes? Yeah, so now that football and basketball is in the books uh, for now, what uh, do we as FSU fans have uh, to look forward to as a whole with regard to the program and all other sports? I know you talked a little bit uh, about it. I didn't know uh, anything else to add. Wes, come on, buddy. You got the Beach Volleyball National Championships coming up next month. Uh, you got the number four program in the country. You got the number one overall seed in women's soccer. Again, they haven't played in five months, so we'll see if there's a little rust. Um, and then, uh, yeah, softball is number seven. Uh, the women's tennis team is ranked pretty high. The golf team, they have might, they might have the, the men's golf team. The men's and women's golf teams might have the two best golfers in the country, um, and, and they're both top five. So we might be looking at a spring, Wes, where Florida State wins six national championships. 
it probably won't happen because you know Stanford's out there. Um, but but still, they could win. A, they could win one or two. I think the track program, if they're healthy, has a chance to make some noise too. So I guess it's all small sports. Not sorry, it's all Olympic sports. It's all non-revenue sports. Um, Olympic sports. That's all right. That's all right. Okay, moving all forward. News. Yeah, uh, but I, yeah, I guess are they all in the Olympics? Everything I just named. Yeah, tennis, golf. Golf's an Olympic sport now. Yeah, it is. It yeah, is. yeah. I don't think baseball. I don't think I don't know that softball is. I thought they got rid of it because the U.S. was too good at it. Um, but yeah, and then the baseball team is uh, it's just going to be a lot of hand wringing about strikeouts and can anybody else in that lineup hit other than the top three guys? There you go. Plenty of options. I just wrote them all down, Corey. Well, now well, I just done, look well done, Corey. Well, well thanks. Done. thanks. Yeah. I was looking Carry. for you. Nailed it. Oh. All right, Wes. We appreciate the hey, phone call, man. Yep. Yeah. Before I go, Aslan, I yep. want to tell you that uh, I really, uh, you know, I, I take credit for being the king of promos, and your promo for Monday's podcast, taking the dig at that team uh, down south, was classic. Great job, buddy. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, you know, try and make it, try and make it fun and interesting like as it. always. I try, I try. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed that. That was good. I, I, I was proud of you. So, <laughs> thank you, uh, well, anyway, y'all, uh, y'all have a good evening, and uh, I'll see if I can't come up. Uh, with something for Langston tomorrow night, right, Aslan? You That's right. Michael's show tomorrow night. 5.30 p.m. on the East Coast. Cool. There you yeah. go. Cre All right. Fair enough. All right. All right. Well, Corey, keep up the good articles. I know it's a little bit more challenging. Can't write about football so much. So uh, I, I know you'll uh, hold it down over there. And uh, y'all y'all have a good evening. And I'll cut the promo on the way out. So uh, it's good talking to you guys. Ooh. Everybody, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to warchant.com and definitely don't forget to drink that delicious De Luna coffee. Don't know. Mm. Bam. That's Wes. We can now Booyah. go all of our lives. We have the promo cut. We got the question in the pot. Everything's great. Thank you, Wes. You're the man. Wes in the villages. Should I admit uh, that I don't I don't know what he was talking about for the for the promo before Monday show? What did you do? Oh, so we we always have a promo, some sort of uh you know, read about the delicious coffee, the Deluna. Mm, good. All right. Okay. And they have a, they have a coffee blend that's called hurricane, which I'm sure some parent family. Well, I thought you said they're big time Florida state fans, which they are. I thought you said they're boosters, which they are. Why do they name something hurricane? Oh, just, I, I said something in the promo about how it's, it's not named after a team with green and orange. And it's certainly mm. not about like the 23rd letter in the alphabet or whatever. Uh, some random layer. I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> okay. You had, you had to hear it. You had to listen to it. Yeah. Okay. To yeah. I had to be there. It's my fault. I probably should. I don't listen to these shows, folks. I'm I'm a part of them. Um. So I, I guess I should go back and at least listen to the stuff you do at the beginning because you always get compliments on your music choices too. Yeah. I try. I try. Hey, look at this. Luis Gonzalez in the house. Do you believe Mackenzie Milton will start at quarterback? Probably at least one game. Or at least one game. Yes, he will start at some point in the fall. I, I, I feel comfor uh, comfortable saying that. Uh, Jamie McCaslin, uh, what do you guys think FSU will have more of by the end of the season, losses or decommits? Ooh. Ooh. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not thinking Jamie's a Florida State fan. Um, I'm, thinking, I think, I'm thinking Jamie's here to take shots at the Knolls. Is he? Um, All right. All right, we'll skip over. Let's, uh, oh, I thought it was a good question, though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's just go ahead and let's just bask in the glory of how awesome everybody that listens to this Boom. show is. Let's go, Shane. Shane's here. All of it. All it's of it. It's not loud enough anymore, Aslan. You got to make it a little louder. I think you've got to find a sweet spot in between blowing people's eardrums out and not being able to hear it at all. There you go. I like that. That's solid right there. Boom. $100. Let's go, Shane. Too nice, Shane. Too nice. Shane got no question. Shane's like, just because I care. Shane, you know, it was, it's been a rough day. It's been a rough few days. But that, you know, just feel it. I feel it right Hits there. Hits you in the feels, doesn't it? Feel and it, I man. saddled him with my uh, my beer bill at the uh, at the place, uh, whatever that was, a couple weekends ago. So, Shane, what? you're you're way too kind. Well, yes, I did. I did. I, I shouldn't. I, did. I offered to pay. I just didn't have any cash. And he's like, no, no, I got it. I got it. I'm like, all right, I'll get you next time, buddy. And I will. Shane, I am. I'm going to get you next time. And we were all at Gene's house for the big uh, for the right, big party. Right, right. Was it a cash bar at the uh, 51 on Madison thing? No, but they had a bill, and I'd ordered a I'd ordered beer from their waitress. 
Oh. And so it was going to be on their bill. And you you I saw know. that place for her to go back and like, okay, here's your three beers. So I just, I, you know, I just thought it'd be easier to do it the way I did it, especially because I didn't have to pay. Shane, you're the man. You know that. You smart. You smart. All right. Um, Khalil's here. All right. Khalil's got some. Go, Khalil. sure. Khalil's here, everybody. It's all good. Khalil says, I think Lawrence Toffili and Jay Sean Corbin are both very good backs. I also think Trey Sean Ward and DJ Williams will contribute, but at the same time, I think this might be the weakest running back core we've had in a very long time. Do you guys agree? Hmm. You know, I mean, they don't, it's the problem there is you've got six years of Dalvin and Cam. Hmm. So that, well, that's a. And Chris Thompson before that, that wasn't too shabby. Well, yeah, you went from, I mean, you went from Chris Thompson, Devontae Freeman, Carlos Williams, James Wilder, that group, to Dalvin Cook, and then from Dalvin Cook to uh, Cam Akers. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, and there's no shame in that. Like, you know, I mean, you're not always going to get Dalvin Cooks and Cam Akers and Devontae Freemans, but I would say probably since, what would you say, 08, 09, it was like Ty Jones and Jermaine Thomas, that group. Mm -hmm. I, I think this. This group is certainly on par with that one. I think this group is better than that one, oh, yeah, mainly yeah. because I think I think Toa Feely has a chance to be one of those guys. Not Dalvin, but he has a chance to be something uh, pretty special. And so you throw you throw he's the lead dog in this scenario, and then the other guys are complementary. Hmm. I think you have a chance, but it's a matter of him doing it number one and staying healthy. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a. a, a I think that's not even a controversial to say that, that it's probably the worst since 07 or 08 or 09 in that group. But then again, they've had some great ones in between. Could they, I mean, what if they run for more yards though? Then, I mean, I, I would assume I should go ahead and pull this up. Um, I would assume though, we would think they're going to run for more yards than Florida state did in 2018. Aren't don't we? Well, yeah, but that will have more, that will have something to do with the offensive line. It might have something to do with who the quarterback is, um, so they get more you know alleys to run through. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's a there's a very good chance they would run. What did Acres run for in eighteen? It was like twelve hundred or something. It seemed like he had a good year. He had a he was over a thousand for sure. I had a really good year for on a bad team. Um, Trying to pull that up, struggling uh, right now. Boy. Yeah, the production the production of this show sometimes. Khalil, uh, I apologize. You know, it's, tough. About, it's tough in the moment. I got an answer to. They rushed for 1,500 yards as a team. They allowed over 2,000 yards. That's not a great uh, combo. 1,500 yeah. yards as a team is not great. Cam had 785. Uh, Jacques had 410. What? And Amir Rasul. Oh, yeah. Was, I thought I was thinking of 19 because 19, Cam had a big year. That's yeah, what I was yeah. thinking of. 19 yeah. was the year I was thinking of. Yeah. Cam so kind of struggled with 1,500 yards in 2018 with five star Cam Akers, five star yeah. Jack Patrick. Um, those guys, I mean, Jock at least got a shot at the league. Cam's going to hang around for a while. Uh, yeah, 1,500 yards. That's like, what is that, 120 a game? That's This team will run for more than that. My gosh. They, they averaged 2.8 yards per carry as a team. We, we lived through that. We cool. lived through a team. At that point, it was four years off that of being the number one team in the country in a 29-game winning streak, averaging less than three yards a carry, with Cam Akers <sighs> as your running back. So that was uh, that was rough. That was a rough uh, rough stretch for the Knolls. But they're coming back around, man. Yeah. I do think this group will rush for more than that. I'll go ahead and be on the record saying that. Yeah. So I mean, again, that's what I, I think is kind of. I don't know if that's what Khalil's trying. But that's to get not. At, but, but I don't. I don't think you would say that's a weak running back core, right? I think that's. I mean, obviously, yeah. I had Cam Akers in it, and Patrick was a, a serviceable to pretty good college running back at times. Um, it's just that the 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 offense and the offensive line were a disaster, and so that's what led to that. But I think I think if you put those running backs on this team, you'd probably get a little more production than you will from this group. But you know. That's just an opinion. Okay. We shall see. Oh, by Khalil, the way, you're the man, though. You're the man, though. I'll always yeah. donate. You're the best. Thank and you. I'll, your questions, I always look forward to them, man. By the way, uh, Anthony Grant's actually surfaced at a community or a, a military junior college in New Mexico. He was, I think, the uh, like the New Mexico junior college player of the week. He ran for like over 200 yards and had four touchdowns in the game out there. So good for him. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Anthony Grant, he he's, might not he's alive. He's, out and he's from he's from Buford. It's my right. neck of the woods, so I'm always rooting for him. I hope he uh, hope he finds a finds a home. So how does that work? So 
they play in the spring, and then are they going to play again in the fall? I These would, schools, like, is Dion going to be coaching in the fall too again? I think so. Yeah. All yeah. Right. This well, is like this, they're having their twenty twenty season now, or just wrapped yeah. up. They're going to get back on the the train with everybody else. Um, so that's at least that's that's what I expect. Um, Not much of an off season there. Well, you know, but yeah, he ran for two sixty three on twenty one carries and four touchdowns, scoring three in the first half and one hundred twenty seven yards on kick returns, three hundred ninety um, all purpose yards uh, for Anthony Grant. So good for him, okay. man. All good right, for, there you go. Do something. Maybe he'll wind up in uh, mm. playing football in paradise in Boca. That'd be good for him. All right, let's keep it rolling here. Let's go to the phone lines. We got a couple callers waiting. Oh, we got let's do. We got it. We got the dude. We got the dude. We are four time zones away. I don't even know. I don't even know if it's Tuesday over there still right now. We got Ralph. He's in Hawaii. Ralph, aloha, friend. Aloha, guys. How's it? I love it, man. I love it. Killing it. Killing it. How are you, Ralph? Uh, well, first, uh, I, I am blessed. Um, I'm dirty as hell because I'm out in the field with some Army engineers, some dozer jockeys. Right. And we're just plowing through, making a road to the top of our mountain. We shoot our sniper rifles from. So I'm just having a hell of a time. <laughs> right. I mean, you're doing that, are you doing that right now? Like as we speak, you're doing that. Well, yeah, I went inside my truck because we're on lunch break, and I knew that we were going to do a call in. Uh, but yeah, I've been in the field all morning with the. Uh, they got here yesterday, and I'll be with them for three weeks. We're just bulldozing some shit. I'm sorry, some stuff, and uh, we're just we're just having a great time. All right, Dude, what a life! What a life our man leads over there. That's crazy. Good for you, Ralph. He might be the most interesting man in the world. Uh, he might be like the most Nikki's guy was modeled after. Ralph, we got your. Uh, we got. got uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ralph. I'm sorry. No, no. I'll just say I got a. Uh, it's almost like I have a private engineering company that works for me because they get they're out of Schofield, but. They don't really have anything to do, and I keep them busy. And they love coming over to our side of the island because we got some good stuff. We're always building training ranges and blowing stuff up. Right. Uh, you guys, I don't know that anybody really has a clue what I do and, and how much of a great life I have. Well, we got a little glimpse of it there. We got a little glimpse of it there. Thank you for the for uh, part two of your care package. I have yet to deliver it to uh, Corey, but I opened up mine. Uh, Man, we there's there's French toast mix in there, Corey. Come on, man. Spoiler. All right. Spoiler. There's yeah, a lot Brady's gonna stuff. Brady's gonna be excited. Yeah. yeah. A lot of good stuff in there. So we appreciate it's, it. Uh, I, I, well, obviously, I, I hope you guys just enjoy it, and uh, and it, and it's something that uh, you guys would enjoy and share with your families and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So you kind of get an idea of what we have out here. Hmm. Um. I wanted to call in this week, if you don't mind, now that baseball is on the front and center. Uh, it's not really my sport. Soccer is my sport. Um, so I wanted to ask Corey specifically, in the past, you have always made reference and that you've made a distinction between a weekday pitcher and a weekend pitcher. And I'm not really following. So I was wondering, could you expand upon that? And uh, help me understand the difference because you know I'm a major league baseball guy. You have a four man rotation and that's it. Uh, but you make a distinction between weekend and weekdays with our pitchers, and and I'm not following you. So uh, how it works in college baseball is the you play you play one series a week and it's the weekend and it's a conference series. So like this weekend, um, okay. Florida State Florida State will play Georgia Tech in Atlanta. That's the big series. And then the following Tuesday, they'll play someone like Stetson or North Florida. No offense to those programs, but they're not Georgia Tech. The games you need to win for RPI purposes, for postseason purposes, trying to win the league are those weekend games. So those are where you put your three best starters is Friday night. Friday night is always your best guy. Then Saturday night and then Sunday. Those are those are your top three. And then the fourth guy will usually be they'll, – they'll, he'll mix and match. Like sometimes it'll be one guy, sometimes it'll be another. They'll try out guys. Um, this year they're only doing one midweek game. In years past they would pitch a Tuesday and a Wednesday. So it's basically you're trying to always work into the weekend rotation. That's what your goal is as a starting pitcher in a college team is to, is to work in the weekend rotation. So like Vanderbilt has the two best pitchers in the country. Uh, Kamir Rocker, his, his dad was Tracy Rocker at Auburn a million years ago. And then uh, Al Leiter's son, Jack Leiter. 
they're the number one and number two pitchers in the country. Well, they pitch on Friday night and Saturday night for Vanderbilt. They would never pitch a Tuesday game because they don't mean as much as the SEC games. So it just means more, Ralph. So that's why you save your best pitchers for uh, for the weekend games is because that those are your top three guys, theoretically. Those are your top three guys. Got it. That uh, makes complete sense. Uh, my entire baseball knowledge was all MLB, where every game supposedly is important. Sure, right. Uh, 62 they play. Um, so anyways, that, that's all I had. I really appreciate y'all taking my call. We, we thank you for taking time out of your day, taking time out of your glorious life, Ralph, to uh, to humor us. We appreciate I'm blowing, it. Blowing stuff up. Blowing yeah. stuff up, man. Living the dream out there. Yeah, this summer we're going to blow up a couple of buildings. Right now we're just bulldozing a road to the top of a mountain. Vacant okay. vacant buildings, everybody. Legal, vacant buildings. Yeah, we're uh, – right. yes. yes, yes. Every, everything I do is legal. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> right so – Mahalo, guys. Yes. Uh, go war chant. Hurrah. Indeed. That's Ralph, everybody. He's from Tallahassee, but he's living the dream right now out in Hawaii. So uh, he'll be he'll be in Tallahassee for the uh, Notre Dame game. Probably a excited about it, man. Reason. Excited about it, yeah. Doing a rooster around the keg. Uh, back to YouTube we go. We are, after all, streaming live here on the program uh, on YouTube. It's our Wednesday podcast. Mm-hmm. If you could hit that thumbs up button, we would appreciate it. Just simply... Puts it out there for more eyeballs to see. Spreads the gospel. That is war chant. Uh, so that would be kind of cool. Uh, I think I see. Who do I see out here? Khalil's there. We got Khalil. We we we, we hollered at our guy Shane. We got an old. We got a. We got a. We got a. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Oh, there we it's been go. A while. I've been worried. I've been worried. But he's back, y'all. It's it's Ray Pereira, everybody. It's Ray <laughs> Pereira. Let's go. He says. As on it, Corey, I've not heard much about our kicking game. I have a feeling we will need a field goal or two to win games this year. Great job, guys. Ray, you're the best. Welcome Ray. back. Yeah. You didn't have to you didn't have to give money to get a question. I would hope not anyway. Aslan's controlling that, but I would think you could say whatever and we'd put it up there. But thank you very much, man. That's very, very kind. We're always, always appreciative. And uh yeah, the kicking game hasn't been impressive. I don't you don't feel good about that. Um no. No. You just don't. I, I think um, I thought Grove House was better in the spring game. It sounds like they were dead even in the spring. And again, as I've always said, Aslan, um, when you have two kickers, you have zero kickers. By the way, somebody emailed me today, didn't say anything other than he gave me the Proverbs number and said iron sharpens iron. As I think it's as man sharpens man or something like yeah, that. As I don't know the exact. Other man. Yeah. yeah. Oh. As if. Again, I really think that I invented iron sharpens iron. I as, as as if I believed that in my soul that what a great saying I came up with. Iron does sharpen iron. But anyway, um, that that's neither here nor there. Uh, and yes, I do think there will be close games this year. Unlike last year, there will be some close games where it might come down to a field goal. And right now, you just don't feel great. It's not that either one, they they both might have one of them might have a great season, be awesome. But right now, you don't feel great about either one of them. I was thinking about that earlier this week, just in terms of because we, we always we get an, inevitably we'll get a question. I was just kind of thinking in my head about the whole what's going to be a good record for this team. And you've mentioned, obviously, it's it, it's hard to put a number on it because we're going to have to see the way it plays out. And I know this sounds crazy because the last few times they've played Florida and Clemson, it's been pretty non-competitive. But like, what if you do lose to Clemson 31 to, to 20 to 28 and you do miss a field goal to try to tie the game up? Uh, you know, I, I guess you, you feel much better about that than you do 59 to 10. So Ooh. that's maybe not a good example. Uh, but I, again, I, I do wonder, you know, these, these things accumulate, man. So if you do lose four or five games and they are close, I wonder how much of it, maybe not so much in the immediate aftermath, but two, three months later when we're doing like the autopsy of the season, will it be like, well, hey, man, listen, they were a few plays away from each of those games from, you know, being a, being a, a nine and three team, or will it be we've seen things in crucial moments that they kind of botched. So why would we think? Well, you think change? about uh, the previous coach. His first year, they got blown out by everybody with a pulse. The second year, they blow a game to Boise State. Um, I don't remember any questionable decisions in that game um, other than the hydration comment afterwards. And then, um, you know, but the way they, they threw it a lot. Remember, like they kept, they went yeah. three and out a bunch, they kept throwing the ball. People like, maybe they should have run the ball. Keep um, the clock moving. But, but then they had the, 
there was the Wake Forest game, which was the debacle. Right. I thought that was the that was the game where you could point uh, to the fourth quarter coaching and being like, "What is going on there?" You you well in the Louisiana Monroe game too, like calling. I think it was the ULM, right? It was. Where he called the timeout to punt, yeah. immediate timeout. Didn't even let clock run to punt to give them enough time to go down the field. They just didn't. Um, there was there was some stuff there where you're like, "Man, that doesn't make any sense." The Wake Forest game. He had to rush to take a timeout. He essentially iced his kicker. He he threw Aguayo out there to attempt a field goal. Nobody on earth thought he was going to make. Probably not even him. Um, and and uh, maybe Forrest Conley did. That's why he asked him who the better kicker, who the better Aguayo brother was. Gotcha. But um, but there were so that's what you wonder. Like when you look at the whole of night the 2019 season that was coached by Willie Taggart, they were a better team. They had made improvements over 18 because 18 got housed by everyone. 19 didn't um, until the way the Miami game was obviously the final straw, but they lost close games. Well, Clemson game got think, housed. They but I don't housed. think, but most of them, I think six of their seven losses in 18 were by 21 or more, more points. I think the losses other than the Clemson game the, the in 19 were all there at the end. You were at least in a game in the third or fourth quarter. Well, that didn't seem to matter much. You still had a lot to complain about. So it, it's the same thing. I know it's a cop out, but it is how you lose these games. Do you make boneheaded, ridiculous decisions at the end of games? Or do you get unlucky, you drive it down the field, use the clock perfectly, and your kid misses a 29-yard field goal that would win it? I mean, there's those things matter, I think, right? Yeah. You know, you know, I think they do matter some. Well, I remember somebody was criticizing me for cherry-picking about, I think it was the 17 season. Uh, I mean, there wasn't a lot of losses to really, you know – research on with Mike Norvell at Memphis. Cause you know, the, those last few years he was they're They're kind of humming along quite nicely, but I remember the temple game in 19, the UCF game in 17, like they scored 31 points in the first half of the UCF game. And they didn't score any in the second half temple game. I think they were shut out in the second half. And if you think about the UNC game this past year, I don't, I don't think they, they maybe a field yeah. goal, like a 40 something yard field goal. So they didn't do all, do yeah. all that well in the second half held on the win. I'll never complain about that. But again, that's one of those things where, like, what if they, yeah, sure. what if they jump out to like a twenty-eight to ten halftime lead on Clemson or Florida, and then lose the game, and it's still a, a one-possession game? I wonder. And again, like, I'm not. This is not me poo-pooing on anything, but th these are the things that probably, to your point, Corey, we really can't put a number on things. But I just think that no matter what, like, man, when you when you're a Florida State fan and your team loses five games in a calendar year or six games, man, it, it's it's hard to find a lot of nuance uh, and be yeah. like, well, you know, it's okay. Um, but I, I think to your point, though, yeah, if, if if he sets everything up, if we see him coach it well, if he's managing the clock well, gets a kicker within you know under 35 yards to tie the game or win it, you know, you're down by one or two and you're you're setting everything up for a 35 yard field goal and you miss it, I don't think I'll I'll give a lot of uh, grief to it. There's going to be people that'll say, well, you, you should have known, you should have should have played aggressive. You've been you've been you were marching down the field, yeah. you had them on their heels. Why'd you? But I'm not going to be that guy. But I think I we can we can criticize moment coaching moments in coaching decisions and still understand that the the program is improving. They, I mean, look, man, if they're up 28 to 10 on Clemson, well, that's a Death Valley this year too. I'm I'm taking off my shirt and running down the hill. That's my <laughs> promise to you guys. Yeah. I'll get kicked out. I won't be able to do anything after the game, post game. But I'm taking off my shirt and running down the hill um, at halftime. So. But you, so you can criticize coaching decisions and still appreciate that the program is getting better. That's kind of where I was with Taggart, really. And then the Miami game was just such a dud that I think that left, you know, I, I, you know, whether you think it was the right thing to do or not, it was understandable in the sense that that Miami game looked just like the Virginia Tech game that had happened in game one. So anyway, here we are. Hey, Ray, thank you, man. Thank you very much, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, shout out to Tony Cleveland. Speaking of optimism. Uh, this is the king of optimism. He asked, when are you guys going to have the podcast on Apple products? Glad you asked, Tony. I hope you're still here. Uh, post in the comments. Let me know that you are still here. Again, if you're on an Apple device, iOS, pod, you know, whatever. I don't know. iPhone, actually. That's the thing. If you go onto the podcast app and you search for Wake Up War Chant, you'll see two results. One of them is going to have the DeLuna Coffee logo on it. This logo right here you see on the mug, which if you're listening to the podcast, you don't see. But it's got this logo on it. Tap on that one. Subscribe to it. You'll be good to go. Don't uns unsubscribe to the other one because we're trying to get it all figured out here. But uh, just search for it. We're still here. I assure you. We're working five days a week on this one. It's crazy. Mm. It's crazy. Mm. It's April. Who to thunk? Who would have? Yeah, thunk? this is the one where you should be. You should be above. You should be really boisterous and vocal about that because 
you, you, we do it every day, but like those people, you do it every day to people that have found it or listening to it. But the the YouTube crew, they might not know about it. So we gotta we gotta be above and beyond uh, telling people about the the snafu with iTunes, hmm. right? Don't you think we're hitting a, we're hitting a different market a little bit, a little different right. demo? You're right. You're right. I was trying to find. I can't even find like a nice. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah, maybe I'll just pull up on the screen right now. You see that right there. See the Luna logo on that one. Mm -hmm. Luna logo go. on that one. That's good. Look at that. It's got the uh, the Devin Travis show. So that's that's updated 2021 April. But like you know, there's this one still going that does has the ESPN Tallahassee logo, which is like four years old. And you see that it stopped in March. So I get it. Uh, but we're out there, Tony. We're out there. All you Apple folks, we're out there. So yeah. uh, do find us. Let's get back to the phone lines. Callers uh, called in four previous times. Should know this. I think I feel like I should know this person, but I don't. So I'm going to have to ask for clarification. Welcome to the show. Who's this and where are you calling us from? Oh, man. How dare you forget Rocket? Oh, it's Rocket. Oh, AK. <laughs> Joseph, it's been a minute, man. I'm sorry, man. It's been a minute. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. I've been trying to get through, you know, previously, but it, evidently it's become very hectic. Lime. Plenty of busy, man. But that's mm. busy. There, I'm here now. So that's, that's right. That's right. Well, we miss you, man. We miss those those dulcet tones of yours, man. Uh, what's on your mind? <laughs> no problem. Listen, I had a quick question uh, that's been burning for the longest. Think about this. Have, do you think that the top guys, the administration, has learned their lesson through this whole three or four, five years? How long has Jimbo been gone? The debacle. Uh, let's just say, let me paint a picture for you. If let's just say uh, Norvell gets this thing turned around, and uh, I'm gonna humor you. Let's say okay. next year, next season, this coming up season, he wins like nine games, okay. and let's say season after that, he like ten, you know, teetering on the brink of playoffs. You know, maybe maybe number five or number six outside looking in. Okay, or, all right. And and you know, once he get it back, because let's be real, mm -hmm. you know, when Jimbo first started, that's kind of where we are now. He he coached us to a national championship, but before that, you know, he was 10 wins, teetering here or there or whatnot. Now, let's say Norvell gets us there, and you know that uh, once he does that, schools are going to come calling. They're going to come, you know, they're going to come and try to snatch him away. Do you think they've learned their lesson to white? No, uh -uh. we're going to give this guy whatever he asks for, whatever it takes a raise, if it takes a, 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 a lamb, if it takes <laughs> whatever it takes. <laughs> Sure. Give this guy what it, do you think they've learned their lesson this you know through this whole debacle? I don't want to I don't want to be I don't want to cape here for the administration. Uh, probably a really apples to oranges comparison with these two guys, but I, I do think that he's probably going to have so much more equity than anybody else could ever imagine because Corey's mentioned it, man. Like this this program went with Bobby, one with Jimbo, it's going to win with somebody else. But I think the fact that we experienced such a precipitous fall. I think is going to make us that much more fearful of ever landing back to where we were that uh, I don't think Norvell's built or wired like Jim to where he's going to be so gruff and abrasive and difficult to deal with. Plus yeah. he's also, everything is working around him. Like the indoor practice facility is already there uh, that, you know, football only facility is in the work. So there's, there's a lot less opportunities for these guys to disagree with one another. Um, I, I, I would assume that they probably, if he's building to that point to where you're, you're mentioning, Joe, that, yeah, he's going to be able to swing it around and get what he wants because nobody wants to go back to what 18 and 19 were, man. No way. Yeah, and, and I, I, yeah, I do think Aslan's right, but I, th I think Joe's right, too. Like, I do I do think they would be much if, – if Norvell, say, won the Peach Bowl and went 11 and 2, and then Arkansas came calling and offered them twice as much money, they might not – hit them with that much money, but they would get real close and they are not going to, that, because yes, I do think that, um, you know, they, hindsight's twenty twenty, man. I think they learned a lesson that you can make a bad hire and torpedo the program. You just can't do it. It can't happen even at a place like Florida state. Remember 2017 was something we had never seen since Bobby's first year. And now we see it every year. Right. So I think our, our perspective has changed a little bit. I didn't, I didn't know that Florida State was like this. I thought it was like the – well, I was going to say the Titanic, like an unsinkable <laughs> ship, which didn't even make it across the ocean once before it uh, before it lost that moniker. But I, I thought Florida State couldn't be sunk. 
Um, as long as you hired somebody that could recruit well and had had success somewhere, Florida State would keep rolling, and that obviously did not happen. So, yes, I think they will um, – now, Norvell and Jimbo, like Aslan said, are completely different personalities, and Norvell will have – should have everything he wants. But say they start dragging their feet. For whatever reason, they go – they win 20 games over the next two years, and they're still dragging their feet, and they haven't started that football uh, palace yet. Yeah, man, you know, I, I think Norvell could be like, please start this or I'm going to have to go somewhere else. I, I think they would listen more. They would be more inclined to listen this time um, th than they were with Jimbo. But again, I don't know that Jimbo wasn't leaving regardless. He he had a wandering eye for a while. I think he got tired of dealing with with Seminole boosters and being told no. He always he would always end up getting it, what he wanted, but it was always wrestling a little bit with it. Texas A&M, they'll give him whatever. He can ask for the sun and they'll give it to him. But at Florida State, it was a little different. Well, now there's new leadership in charge at Seminole Boosters, too. You, know, you hope that that relationship – I mean, that was all – it was fractured with Jimbo and Seminole Boosters. It was fractured. And you hope that this relationship is much more, uh, you know, happy-go-lucky, sunshine, and rainbows. Hmm. Right, right. I'll uh... – I'll ask one more question, then I'll go in and get off. It's been a long time since I talked to you. Oh, you're good. And I've been missing y'all. Y'all didn't send an AP. Y'all didn't send an APB out for your boy, the true pillar, or nothing. I'm just. <laughs> um, let me ask you this real quick. What would you consider? Well, we always use the, the words "turn around." You know, we want Novell. We hope Novell gets it turned around. What's turned around? Because to me, I would say turned around is. I mean. Nine games at least, but is that what the fan base want? Are they or are they demanding, you know, uh, national championships? Because, you know, um, I was telling my wife one time. I said, you got to understand, baby. I've been a Florida State fan since I was 14 years old. I'm 44 now. Mm. This is the worst. It's, it's not about losing games. We absolutely stink, and I have never seen this. <laughs> so, yeah, consider turning around. Turn around. I think that, man, I think if you're competing for ACC championships, that's a turnaround. Look, you're in a horrible spot. And that's not where Florida State wants to be, uh, ideally, in the future, is just competing for ACC titles. It should be competing for national titles. But for right now, eight or nine wins a year, becoming, uh, you know, what, what would that even – I was trying to think of the equivalent, like the SEC, and I can't. Uh, being like a Georgia, frankly. Georgia never wins anything. Trust me, I know. Uh -huh. Georgia never wins anything. But um, but they can they're in the mix. Just if you can be in the mix and get back to where you should be, which is a consistent top ten, top fifteen program, that to me is a turnaround. You know, that last year, Joe, they had the hundred and ninth ranked defense in the country at Florida State, one oh nine. So hey, maybe it's just getting in the top hundred. There's your turnaround, getting the top hundred defensively. But but in all seriousness, I, I do think that you get to an eight or nine win consistent team. And then occasionally you have that run. I, you're never going to have a dynasty again. I just don't – I don't see that happening. Um, but you can get where you're eight or nine, ten wins consistently. And every couple of years, maybe you have – every three, four years, you have a special group that breaks through and you compete for a national title. Or you win a national title even. You, that, that's where I think you can be. That to me is a turnaround. Why don't, why don't you think they'll get back to a dynasty, Corey? I mean, I don't think that happens. I, I just think top, it, it's my Clemson, dynasty. Isn't Clemson is Clemson's kind of is, is what Clemson at right now? Is that a dynasty? It's been what's it been eight years now? Yeah, I don't know what we how we define dynasties, but yeah. my definition of dynasty is fourteen years of top four finishes. Well, yeah, that's I just don't think that's I don't think that's feasible. That's not happening. So that's my definition of a dynasty. Like if you went ten years and won two titles and finished in the top ten six times. That's a that you could probably qualify that as a dynasty, and I think Florida State can get back there. I do think they can get back there to that, but we're never gonna. You're never gonna go into every season again thinking, okay, well, we you, you're starting the season ten and zero, you know, or nine and zero. You just got to be Florida and Miami. That's that's not the case anymore. It's going to be a little harder than that. But man, they yeah, I, I, that was a long winded way of probably not even answering the question. But to me, that's the turnaround, Joe, is to get to be a winning top fifteen program consistently and then compete for it every couple of years, compete for a national title. Yeah. I mean, you throw out that Louisville game, like, you know, Florida State was always competing in Jimbo's tenure. I mean, because also Oklahoma 2010, that was his first year. I'll give him a little bit of slack there. You have to factor something in about the, the way that the Florida is rolling right now. Um, I mean, you know, these almost, 
I shouldn't say almost sunk into the playoff. They've been to two New Year's Six Bowls with that coach yeah. being there. Three? Has he been to three? Was he there the first year? 18, did they go to a New Year's Six Bowl? Because so I know 19, I 19, they played Virginia in the Orange Bowl. And then last year, they played Oklahoma in the Sugar Bowl. or the hey, Con- this, ain't, this ain't wake up Gators. Well, I'm just saying, like, that's got to stop. I mean, for the Florida, yeah. I mean, you need, well, you need to be the preeminent program in this state, and I'm not worried that worried, worried about Miami, but like you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to lap Florida. Yeah, I man, you got to get past them. And I, I, I know everybody. Clemson's the big thing we all got to worry about. I hate losing to Florida, and I, not only losing to Florida, but like not being competitive against Florida. Yeah. Uh, Florida State's never been in, in that position in my lifetime, uh, so that's that's a huge part of the puzzle for me. And I think if you are with them, then everything else will kind of fall into place. Corey's point probably a little bit more salient. If you're competing for the ACC championship, uh, you know you can also kind of, you know, lasso in a Florida win as being in that sort of conversation. Even though it's not a conference game, but you'll probably be doing well if you're uh, in that sort of rarefied air. So it's tough to put a number on it, but we'll know it. You know, it's one. Of the, it's it's. I think uh, Jay Billis said it's like obscenity. I, I I can't define it, but I know when something's obscene. Yeah. That's the obscenity yeah. law. Uh, I can't I can't define what's going to be Florida State being back, but I think we'll all know it. Like the way they played against North Carolina in the first half, we got four, 12 yeah. games, 24 halves. Play like that for 20 halves. Play like that for there 20 halves. There you go, Aslan. You tell there them. You there we go. Hey, Joe, thanks for the call, man. Don't be a stranger, Joe. Of course not, man. Y'all my boys. Man. Oh, and one more thing. I do look forward to – seeing you guys on at least a home game when I come down there. Uh, I don't know which one I'm coming to yet, but I, I make it an annual thing. Me and my son come. So okay. when I come, I'm going to look you up or whatever. Do it. And uh, so until then, um, go nose until they close my casket. <laughs> 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 Rocket City. No, man. That's Joe. He's in Huntsville, Alabama. We appreciate the phone call. Last on air, October 2nd, 2020. Been a while. It's been a while, but, uh, has it? I thought he had YouTubed us a few times, though. He yeah. had messaged us a few times on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, but that's what but, you said. He's only called. That was only his fifth call. Yeah, yeah. He's a memorable dude, dude, man. Because I thought he was. I thought he. I bet I would have guessed he'd called twelve or fifteen times. Well, that's also since we went to this new kind of calling platform, which has only been around for a year. We've been doing these shows for like two years now, or maybe a year and a half. So he's probably got another half dozen that that okay. weren't part of that right. system. So we appreciate Joe. Uh, let's wrap it down, uh, or rather close it down, wrap it up with uh, all the questions that we have and uh, the feedback. I mean, everybody's here. YouTube, let's go, Mark. Let's go, Mark. That's, uh, that's Mark in Naples, everybody. He's gave us $50. Corey, you ready for the 2021 prediction yet? No. Not yet? I got to know who the quarterback is. I'm not going to make a prediction until I know who the starting quarterback is. That seems fair, right? Okay. That Mark's going with 9-3 and three with an upset or two. I love the way Mark views life. You know what I mean? What a way to view. He was so upset that day at the HOA meeting. He was. That I thought he had maybe he'd lost some of his some of his perspective and his positive outlook. But no, he's right back with a nine and three. I like it, man. That'd be something. That'd be that'd be a turnaround, Joe. Uh, but Mark, thank you very much for the for the uh the tip. That's very nice, man. All right, we got some we got some uh, tenant. We got Heath from Chattanooga in the house, and then uh Joe followed up. Joe's Joe, uh, Rocket City Knoll, give him a shout out. Look at that. Alabama, Tennessee Valley. We're, uh, we're statewide, worldwide, nationwide. That's how we roll yep. here. Uh, Mark, yeah, thank you for the support, Mark. Thank you very much. I already saw that he's got a question in for the Renegade Express, so uh, he's locked and loaded. He's he's not messing around. He, it's not off-season for him. He's, he's still ready to go. Mm. Ray asks, do we still have that 40-win streak in baseball, or did that end? No, it's with the Florida State. Well, I don't know. I guess last year doesn't count. There were 12 12- Last year, so technically, I guess it ended last year, but it is going to end this year. Uh, they 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 only playing fifty games as opposed to fifty six, um, and those six games were the the games at the beginning of the season, like against Maine, where you win five of those. So they lost at least five wins off their ledger. Um, so the, unless they make it to Omaha, and they'll probably even have to win a game or two in Omaha to get to forty wins again. So I think that streak is over. I think the one you want to concentrate on now is the postseason streak. Keep that thing alive because it's not a guarantee. Uh, Shane comes to clarify. Michelle and I were honored, Corey, to buy you beers. We're good. I mean, Shane, just no, good guy. Shane. Not happening. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy you. Uh, I think they were drinking real beer. Um, I don't think they were drinking the stuff I was drinking. Um, well, she, I think she might have been even drinking a cocktail or oh. wine. But either way, 
It's on me next time, Shane. I promise, buddy. It's on me. Dan Squatch, I don't get why everyone is always down on Corbin. His game is versatile, reliable, and he works the right way. I'm Man, not, I like Corbin. I'm not down on yeah. Him. I like yeah, well, I think it's going back to the Khalil Young question, but I, yeah. Corbin's a good player, man. He, I don't know that, you know, again, you got to remember where you're at, where what program we're talking about. Um, you know, it would be like Kobe White in North Carolina, the basketball player. He's a pretty good, pretty good point guard. He was a number one, for, he was a first round pick, but he ain't somebody that's going to go down in history as one of the best in North Carolina history. I mean, you're dealing with some great guards that have come through there. Kobe White's just Kobe White. Deshaun Corbin is a good player, and he has a really good role on a really important role on that team. Um, but you got to remember, it's a program that's in the last ten years or twelve years: is Thompson, Freeman, Wilder, Cook, and Akers. So that's a tough comparison. That's tough by comparison. Khalil, what's the status of Emmett Rice, and why has the staff been so secretive about confirming what it is? That's the one knock I will say about it's. I get uncomfortable seeing how uncomfortable Norvell gets when we ask him about injuries. We don't have an update on the status of Rice. I do know that I think in the immediate aftermath, after we had, he had confirmed that they, he did sustain a knee injury, we saw him, I think, at that scrimmage on a Saturday, and he was walking around with a, with a you know gingerly, lightly limping, but no brace, no sleeve, nothing on his leg. And then the next time that practice was open and available for us to go watch, he had like a sleeve, and he was on crutches. So they, they cut him, I'm assuming, unless it was arthroscopic, but I'm, you know, he did get some sort of procedure done on his leg. I don't know what the timetable for his return is. Um, he did, I think, somebody said ACL, and then Emin himself retweeted and said fake news. Mm. Uh, but uh, maybe that's something we'll get some uh, insight into uh, as the summer sort that's of. That's a bummer, man. It's a bummer. Yeah, but they haven't said. There's no official status of him. Um, you know, I think we can all we can all read between the lines and think that uh, two, 2021 might not have him at Rice yeah. as a part of it. Especially at the beginning of the season, maybe there's something that can happen midway through. But I would be surprised if he if he was. All right, uh, we got True Seminole, uh, Seminole. also known as Bryson. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. What's up, Bryson? He's in Lake Ooh. City. He uses the username True Seminole. Corey, are you ready for my race to stomp on your Braves? Plus, I'm all his Braves hate. I don't know. Plus, I'm excited for the draft. My Jags finally have something good happening. Trevor Lawrence. It's odd that he's a he's a Rays fan and a Jags fan instead of a Bucks fan. Wonder how that happened. Well, yeah, Lake City's like, a little closer to Jacksonville, I guess. You know. Yeah, well, yeah, and you got to have a baseball team, right? So yeah. there's not like there's a baseball team in Jacksonville. I mean, it's a minor league team, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm assuming that's going to happen, uh, Bryson. Uh, the Braves aren't great this year, um, and I'm I'm pretty worried about it actually. I feel like in the NLCS last year, I'm like, you know what? Sure, we lost three straight to the Dodgers. But that's an all-time team. We're built for the long haul. <clears throat> and maybe it's just like the Falcons. You had your one chance, and then you blew it. And now you're never going to you're never gonna get close, uh, at least for another decade or so. I don't, It doesn't make any sense. You guys have all the same pieces. You didn't lose anybody, did you, of consequence? No. Uh, well, the bullpen. The bullpen is struggling. And then Max Freed has been terrible so far. He's given up more runs. I think the, the he's given up more runs this year already than he gave up all of last season. Um, and three starts. So that's not a great sign for your ace. But, there, hey, it's early. He might figure it out. And if Freed figures it out and if Soroka gets going, I'm going to be all excited again. All right. All said. Fair enough. There you go, guys. There you go. There's your Braves update. In the winds here. In the wind, just going to go ahead and just throw this into the atmosphere. Ten bones. Horn gang. Thank you in the wind, too. Appreciate it. Thank you, you buddy. Bones. We appreciate it, man, very much. Um. I think we got it. David Spingler says at least six wins this season is what I expect and what I would view as things in the process. Well, that the process of tournament. Well, yeah, but sure. we want we want it to turn. We don't want to see the process of it. But when did know. you think Jimbo? It's funny, but I was thinking about that when Joe asked that question. Like, did you did? I don't feel like people thought it was turned around in eleven because they lost oh, those three straight yeah. games, including the awful one to Wake Forest. Yeah. And uh, Jimbo was not a very popular person in Tallahassee. No. And then you're like, okay, it has been turned around in 2012. And then the debacle in Raleigh. Yeah. And you're like, okay, it ha you know what I mean? Like, I don't – even in 2012 when they won the Orange Bowl, I'm not, not quite, yeah. I'm not quite sure that people thought, okay, Florida State is back back. Right. In fact, I don't. I you know, I remember Heather Dennett saying this is their ceiling. They've hit their ceiling and whatever, making yeah. what whatever that crazy story she wrote was, and it clearly wasn't the ceiling. But 
Um, so I don't know if we'll even, it's going to be hard to even know, right? Like it'll take a, a years of sustained success, like four or five years of being a 10 win-ish type team to think, okay, they're absolutely back. Yeah. I, I remember in 11, like I was covering a Ole Miss game or something and following along on my laptop and I'm like, they lost to Wake Forest. I'm like, we're still doing this. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, in 12, obviously with the NC state game, you know, I, I'm being honest, but I, I was like, we're just, ne- I'm like, Florida State's never going to win it again. I'm like, just never going to happen. We had the run. I didn't really appreciate it. This is just what they're going to be. Like, they're, it's never going to happen again. It's just the way it is. And then, yep. but I was okay. Like, as stupid as that sounds, <clears throat> we were beating Florida in Miami. I'm like, I'm still not that sad about this. I mean, you know, like, I want to win national championships, but I wasn't, I wasn't like, get rid of Jimbo by any stretch, by any stretch. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. just like, because I, I like the way he talked about the team and just, uh, you know, just he's, he was out of central casting for me. You know, he's my first love. Um, right, I got you understood. But uh, nonetheless, uh, Ray uh, Ray agrees with me. I would rather lose to Clemson than Florida. I yeah. think most people agree with that sentiment. Even I don't know though. Like, yes, I. I but I think it's getting closer after Dabo's uh, nonsense this past fall, in regards to Florida State being a bunch of cowards. I think he might have moved himself up a little bit, where it's going to be mighty sweet if they beat him again. Khalil, if Alabama has been this dominant for 11 or 12 years now, I think FSU could do it. Well, you got to have some, one of the best coaches of all time. And you yeah. have a load of money. Boat and load. I, I don't know that you expect Norvell to be a lifer, even if he is the next Nick Saban. Is he going to stay at Florida State for a decade and a half? And are we guaranteed that whoever replaces Norvell will be just as good? That's where the issue comes in. Like Saban taking his this job, and it's his last job, it's just it's just a perfect storm at that school with that money and that tradition and all those bagmen, and you it's just a perfect storm of uh, a dominant run. And I don't know that Florida State can get back there again just because I don't know that you're going to have another Bowden that stays here for for decades. Right. Um, Khalil comes back. Khalil, with cash offering twenty dollars. Khalil, thanks, man. You're too, you're too nice. You're too generous, really. Khalil, come to Tallahassee. I don't know if he lives in Tallahassee. Do we know anything about Khalil? I think he lives on the east coast of the state. Okay. Well, maybe if he's in Tallahassee for a game or something, we we, we can meet up for lunch or something or beer <laughs> or coffee. Yeah, man. Coffee. That's right. All right. What are two of our tougher games on the schedule you would think you would be the least surprised in us winning? Two tougher games on the schedule – but you'd be least surprised if we were to win. He says North Carolina and Notre Dame. Also, what game do you think will be our best, hardest played game? I know it's still far out, he says. I mean, I'm definitely, I think those two are the right ones. Uh, Florida, I just, we. it's so hard to know what Florida's going to be. It's just so hard to know. They're, le- they're losing so much talent off that offense. Um, like literally like two first round picks, the number one tight end in the draft, one of the top receivers in the draft, and then one of their all-time great quarterbacks are all leaving. So I don't know that we can assume that they're just going to pick up right where they left off and beat the bejesus out of Florida State. Um, but I still think I like the Notre Dame one just because they're breaking in a lot of guys too. It's the first game. There's usually – I know they struggled um, their last first game. I think they – did they open up with Notre Dame or North Carolina two years ago? I can't remember whenever that was. Um, but they, uh, you know, it's, it's all t- season openers are always tough on the road at dope at night, um, new coach. There might be some energy in that state in that, in that stadium and it could it, new quarterback, all that stuff. You might, you might have a chance there. I'm going to say, I think they're going to, I think they're going to do something weird against Clemson. That, that'll be my, oh. hmm. uh, all right. I think okay. they'll be, I think we'll be very proud of them, the, the effort. Yeah. To say that they got they got all these sounds they got a bye week and they got UMass they got yep. Clemson manhood was challenged yep I'll step up I'll step up I think so all right last one and um, I say that with lots of uh, lots of love because after all guys this is a very special occasion the Godfather himself has been kind enough to grace us with his presence the Godfather this is his day now he lives there he sleeps twenty feet away. That would be Ed Lemmix, the man, the myth, the legend, the uh, the driving force, along with his son, Brett, behind DeLuna Coffee, our title Ooh. sponsor. Uh, Ed just got into Panama City Beach for the Seabreeze Jazz Festival this weekend, and it's Courtney and my anniversary day. All right. Oh, there you go. Congratulations, LaMoxon. You did it. 
Let's go, man. All right. Not, not. All right. Let's see. Here, uh, I've gone for like fifty. Uh, I thought that. I thought fifteen years was the uh, the uh, no, anniversary. The that, the man. They, they've been they've been thick as thieves for a long time. Well, Ed, congrats to you and Corey. Or, oh, jeez. Hey, Corey. settle down, oh, Aslan. Sorry, it's ruined. Ed, it you, Ed, you know you're my guy. You know that. Yeah. But come on. Congrats to you and Courtney on your uh, your anniversary. Uh, so I'll, I'll drink some of this in your honor. Some of this good mm. stuff in the Deluna Cup. We appreciate it, Ed. You're the man. Or as Sean Connor said, you're the man now, dog. Um, so here we go. All right. I think there might be one Eric, 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 what are you doing, Eric? You don't have to, you don't have to always do that. I mean, Eric threw $15 last minute. No, hey man, that's very nice. Eight and four this year, 14 and 0 next year. You watch. Class of 22 is gonna be loaded, he says. Hey man, we it's what we're all rooting for. That's what we're all rooting for. That would be incredible, and they better name the stadium after Norbell. They might be having to name it after somebody here soon. Um, so if Norbell goes fourteen and zero, two years after taking or three years after taking over the job, you know, where it was when he took it over, absolutely, it's Norbell. It's Bobby Bowden Field at Mike Norbell Stadium. What are you talking about? Didn't you read Gene Williams' War Room? Come on, man. The name. The name's going to sustain for a little bit, it seems like. Yeah, yeah, until Mike Norvell goes 14-0. Okay. And you're then right. you're going to be like, you know what? Let's just do it. I don't know what his middle initial is, but we're going to have to throw that in there too. Okay. Like Mike P. Norvell. Um, speaking of war chant, Corey, you got something over there that people should go check out, right? Yep, talk with Stan Jones, the associate head basketball coach, just about uh, the transfer portal and how Florida State's handling it. Uh, they are obviously looking at it. They're 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 abreast of all the players of the year and all Americans that are flying through there. Like uh, it's just incredible. Um, so yeah, just talked about that and how how um, he had some good quotes just about how different it is now to build a roster. Like you, they don't even know for sure the kids that are that left if they're actually gone until the middle of July. And then on top of that, you have all these players in the portal. It's uh yeah, it's just um it, it's a different deal. Uh, now, but uh, he thinks that that was one of the main reasons Roy Williams stepped down is, you know, two days after they lose, his best big man tells him, I'm not going to be here anymore. He's like, what am I doing with my life? So, but he did say it's like the animal kingdom. You got to adapt or you're going to go extinct. So they are adapting to this new age of uh, college basketball, which includes a lot of portal visits. Well, I just saw the player of the year in the uh, Sun Belt from Coastal Carolina, like Devontae something. He just put his name in the portal. So 6-1 oh, guard, I don't know if we're in the but, uh, they don't really hunt the six one guards too much, but you know, maybe, maybe. But I didn't realize this until he, I was talking to him. They've only taken since I've been covering the team, I think they've only taken two transfers that actually came via the normal transfer route that weren't grad transfers or um JUCO. And it was Tony Douglas, Douglas. from Auburn and then Malik Osborne from Rice. Those are the only two that have been those kind of transfers. Everyone else, like Jeff Peterson or Dominic. Our guy last year, the kid, yeah, and then you know he they were, they were grad students, David Nichols, and then the JUCO guys like Angola and Savoy and uh, what about Kofer though? What about Phil Kofer? No, he was a, he was a recruit. I thought he transferred. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought he we committed to Mizzou. Yeah, he didn't enroll at Mizzou. Yeah, right? no, he he committed. Yeah, exactly. He he's yeah. yeah he he was a recruit. All right, everybody, thanks for the calls. Thanks to Gator Kirk. Uh, thanks to Wes. Thanks to Ralph. Thanks to Joe. Uh, I won't say who was calling and, and, and hung up on us. It's fine. Uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, the super chats, for the tips. We appreciate it. Ed, Eric, in the wind, too. Khalil, True Seminole, a.k.a. Bryson. Mark in Naples. Ray, uh, Shane, and Thomas. Did I say Khalil? Khalil did like three he times. Did, yeah. It was crazy like that. So. Oh, we'll have, uh, shows for you folks. I think the rest of the week, because uh, we're going to get Renegade Express. I do say connect to warchant.com. Go check out that story that Corey's got about the basketball team trying to use the portal to keep this thing rolling. Hopefully, four uh, second weekend appearances, maybe even a, a third weekend appearance uh, mm. next time around. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. Uh, it's been Wake Up Warchant fueled by DeLuna Coffee.